And finally, we have seen plenty of home movies of football fans reacting to games. Tennessee fans have gone viral a few times when it was time for a Hail Mary. But before the days of television, the fans were the ones actually shooting the games. WBIR 10 News reporter Jim Matheny shows us football history lives in home movies. If you want real sports history, going back all the way to the 1920s, the lenses that focused on early gridiron glory are found at home. On film shot by the fans. It's great, not just the games, but the fans, the stands. At the Tennessee Archive of Moving Image and Sound, Eric Dawson works to preserve antique footage, including vintage video of the Vols. They made home movies basically throughout the entire century. And from the very start, camera shops made a play for football fans. People would bring these cameras to the game to film them. This is the earliest footage of the UT Vols we have from 1928, Shields Watkins Field. It only held about 6,600 people, but uh, it's amazing that you could see so much of the surroundings. And some of the best movies come from a man named Jim Thompson, who ran a photo business in Knoxville. Some really exciting action footage. He shot the oldest film of a Tennessee-Alabama game from 1929, when the Bama jerseys were a little different. In 1938, Thompson shot the first footage of the Big Orange in color. You see College Football Hall of Famers Bob Suffrage, Big Ed Malinsky, Bowden Wyatt, and number 72, George Bad News Cafago, a bad man who played kicker, defensive safety, and tailback. That season, UT won its first national championship at the Orange Bowl, and a couple of fans shot home movies of the Vols' big win over Oklahoma then sped home to show the fans in Knoxville the scenes. Film these games, edit them together, and show them at public screenings. I really like how uh, Cree art works. It's very clever and creative. These home movies are not perfect. You might miss the end of an exciting play due to another piece of history. Back then, almost everyone wore a hat. People really dressed up to go to these games. They were wearing suits and hats, and uh, the women who went were wearing dresses. And Vol fans were all dressed up with somewhere to go in 1939. UT was undefeated and did not give up a single point all year, and landed an invitation to the Rose Bowl. The team and the fans took the train to California. Three different people from Knoxville who took 16 millimeter cameras out there. It does capture sort of the journey. Some of this footage was only found a couple of years ago. It's really rare that this turned up. Someone found some film in an attic. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. Famous film director Clarence Brown, who was originally from Knoxville, actually hosted them on the back lots of Hollywood. But there was no Hollywood ending for the Vols, who got a bad break when Bad News Cafago blew out his knee during practice. UT lost to Southern Cal 14 to nothing. But the movies from the trip show they still came home as heroes. Fans kept shooting from the sidelines throughout the 1940s. A dentist from Rockwood caught this famous play in 1946, when the Vols' Walter Slater, number 23, returns a punt 79 yards, fakes a lateral, sends the defender spinning, and laughs as he scores the game-winning touchdown against top 10 North Carolina. Fans filming on the field starts to fade in the 1950s as TV stations sign on the air and broadcasters shoot sports for their profession. But the foundation of footage of Tennessee football comes from the fans, the volunteers who recorded real sports history on their reels at home. It just really sort of underscores how important UT Vols culturally is to uh, Knoxville and East Tennessee. What a big deal it was to people. In downtown Knoxville, Jim Matheny, WBIR 10 News.